Hey there, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. And today from Katowice 2019, it's going to be Gumio and Serral here on Year Zero, the latter edition. Top right-hand corner from Ents Gaming, it's the Blue Zerg player. You know him as Serral. And in the top left-hand corner from Psystorm Gaming, it's the Red Terran player, Gumio. All right, man, it's going to be Gumio versus Serral here. Gumio, a very, very high-level, top-tier level Terran player. Really like his stuff. He's fairly unorthodox. He likes doing a lot of weird things, kind of Maru in that way. And I expect to give him Serral all that he can handle here. I mean, Serral's ZVT is very good, but we've seen him lose. We've seen him lose on the channel recently in one of those longer games versus Innovation. I'm not going to tell you which one it was if you haven't seen it. But just go watch some Innovation games versus Serral, and you will see at least one from that player versus the top player in planet earth right now or on planet earth right now is he going what gumio's going command center first you guys holy crap i like this i like this so much because you know serral's just going to overlord scout he's not going to see this in time to do anything about it gumio's going to get this thing down serral went hatch first dollars to donuts he went hatch first he's going to try to get some lings out to pressure this thing but it will be done long before the lings get across the map but before the lings are even made i think based on the time we're seeing here so fantastic job by Gumio getting the command center first play. I'm in love with this. There's your extract. The pool's not even halfway done yet. I almost feel like Terran should just do this regardless. Just go command center first regardless against Zerg. Zergs are so lazy these days. They will not work or scout. They don't want to lose the mining time. They just want to just entirely rely upon these overlord scouts, and it's just not enough. Sure, it delays your Reaper, but what's the Reaper really doing against somebody like Serral in 2019 anyway? The answer is not much. It's just not much at all. All right, so he's got double gas running pretty early, which I find very interesting. It is going to be a Reaper. Okay, for sure. we got to see a factory next here out of Gumio. The resource count is not quite there for it, so he's going to mine until it is. And yeah, check this out. We've got a drone. What the wait? Is it the third? That's a third base drone. I was like, look like Lings for a second on the minimap, but no, nah, just a drone. And there's your third base at about 2 220. So not quite as fast as Dark was doing it yesterday in the series of his that I cast versus stats, but still pretty fast nevertheless. Uh, sub two minute is incredibly fast, sub three minute is about the standard at this stage. So Zerg players, if you go ahead and scout on over and you see it's not a proxy, and you see it's nothing hugely to worry about there, then you're gonna be just fine. All right, so Reaper cruising, is he even gonna do anything? Do we need to name this guy if he's not even gonna move out? I mean, he's late, he knows he's late, he knows there are lings. And Queen's ready to kill him if he tries to move out across the map. So he's just going to defend. So he's boring. Reapers that try to kill stuff and go out across the map are exciting. They get backstories. Reapers that sit here passively floating on their jetpacks. They do not get any such respect. All right, man. So that is, yes, we're doing all the things. Factory here with a reactor. Is this additional? That's a starport. That's another factory. This looks like mecking play out of Gumio, which is something he is really into. As it turns out. So, we're going to go definitely try to mech here against Serral, which I almost feel like is the better strategy when compared to Bio these days. We've seen great success from Terran players who go mech versus Zerg, as opposed to those who go to the traditional Bio. It's interesting. It really is. I mean, it's not unbeatable, right? The mech is good. It's not something that Zerg players necessarily always die to, but it can be very strong. Hellbat timings can be great. These big Thor pushes can be hard to deal with. And as we saw in that rough versus ET Pone home game last week, which if you didn't see that, come on, guys. It was a super long ZVT with mech involved at the GM level with rough. Like, who are you that you looked at that and said, that doesn't sound fun at all, and just moved on? Although, you know, fair enough. I suppose everybody is can have their own opinions. I'll, I'll allow it. So Cyclone production, we've got a Viking there too. Serral's just droning up. He's really not doing much at all. He's a Rotorin, but exactly zero roaches because he doesn't need them yet. He hasn't scouted anything coming to kill him yet. There is, in fact, a Cyclone out. Cyclone, oh boy. Cyclone plus Viking is bad news for Mr. Overlord. Gumio's taking a third down this left side. Creep spread pretty fantastic for Serral, as you would expect it to be. And yeah, man, it's going to be Hellions, Cyclones, and Banshees for Gumio. Serral, to deal with this, I honestly kind of like Lings. Unless there's an armory, unless there's an armory, in which case we see Hellbass, and then the links just die. As we saw again in that game with E.T. Pone Home versus Rough. So Hellion's trying to dart on in here, get some stuff done. Lings on creep are not bad 
against Hellions, as it turns out. They're split, they're spread, they're gonna come in. Oh, almost got the trap. Oh, he does pin them all. Mm. Gets that full surround, kills every Hellion. Control by Serral is just top, top tier, top notch. Right there, he's got his lair, it's done. Going for Magfield Accelerator is Gumio right now, increasing the damage done by Lock-On from 400 to 800, which is kind of insane. It's a lot of damage output on that thing. It takes a while, it's not an instant cast, it is a cast over time. But still, if you can attack something like a building with it, you're going to be pretty darn happy about that. All right, man. Ling's cruising on into this third base. Can they do anything? Nope. Can't do anything about it. I'm not sure he even scouted that, to be honest. Too many Hellions. Too many Hellions out. So Cyril does not know about the third base. He's going to try to scout it up this ramp. Is it going to be allowed? And yes. He barely catches a glimpse of that base. There's an Overseer up here getting scouted out and destroyed by a Viking. Changeling on the ground trying to get something done, but man, that Overseer, you toast. Bam! Body falling down into the crevasse. Hello, Amon. Glad you're still here. Glad you didn't take a vacation or something. That'd be weird if that happened. All right, so Serral not going for a fourth. Very... Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hey! It's a fourth. All right, man. So Serral's getting a fourth at the six-minute mark here. We've got Glial Reconstitution and plus one missile attack. So he's going to handle this with what looks like roaches, probably ravagers, maybe some hydras in the mix too. Hiders are pretty good against Banshees, as we have at least one of them out so far. Uh, just the one. Just the one, so maybe don't go crazy on the Hydralisks. If you make any of them at all, I think maybe Roach Ravager will be ample for this, if you ask me. Alright, so Sarah was forced to make some Zerglings to deal with those Hellions. That slowed him down quite nicely. Did he dodge that attack? He dodged that entire attack. That was incredible. More Hellions cruising on in. This is how you have to play mech. You have to be constantly attacking with Hellions, or else the Zerg player will sit back and max out in what feels like 35 seconds, and you will die. Roaches chasing away these Hellions. The Cyclones here, kind of the answer for Roaches. Bonus damage versus armored. Roaches are armored and don't have much HP to begin with. So 68 to 65 workers. Gumio has been absolutely killing it with his worker count. His third base is effectively, yep, fully saturated, man. He's ready to rock there. He's throwing up a bit of a wall of supply depots, which is weird. Maybe here or here would be better if you're worried about Link counterattacks. I'm not sure what that positioning is for. But Cyril's already on Infestor tech. He's making Infestors. He's going for a hive. He's been effectively left alone for the first seven minutes of this game. Roach is battling a million Hellions. Oh, yeah, man. See, the problem with Cyclones is you can't really retreat from them as they'll lock onto you and chase you the whole way home. That said, Speed Roach is pretty fast. And once they get on creep, they're even zippier. And so far, he manages to get the heck on out of there. I eat. Serral's going for a Spire right now, which is pretty exciting stuff. And Gumio just race car mechin' it, man. He is not going for tanks. He's not going for Thors. I thought for a second he might go there eventually, but it's just Blue Flame. It's just more Cyclones. And some Medivacs in there, too, for the Hellbats. If they're going to go for that change, which they can, because the Armory is done. All right, man, so Serral is going to be maxed out here momentarily. We're eight minutes into this game, no question about it. He is going for some Infestors, which likely Fungals would be pretty good against this army, holding them in place. There it is! See what I'm talking about here? Another Fungal! Oh, Gumio. Oh, Gumio. Bad times, bad news bears. They're losing some Cyclones. Army Supply, 103 to 53 right now. Are you kidding? Serral is absolutely crushing right now cyclones trying to kite back and back and kill as many of these roaches as they can the infestors are not part of the play right now they are trailing behind they don't have the energy for a fungal anyway all right so blue flame gonna help a little bit here banshee gonna have a great time just doing as much damage versus these ground units as she can and Cyril decides it's time to go home i don't have what i need i have double the army supply but i don't have what i need to beat this army and go across the map and win how insane is that how insane is that? A Ravager gets picked off there too. Resources lost to this stage are 3350 to 3650. Serral's lost a little bit more, but not as much as you would expect here. Serral taking a fifth base in the bottom right-hand corner. He's working on a greater spire. He's making more infestors, getting plus two missile attack. And Gumio getting a fourth base in the bottom left-hand corner too. It is already done and it's being upgraded to a planetary fortress. All right, so we're just kind of hanging out. Hellions... Do cruise on into this right side map, or right side base. Do scout it out, reveal their position. Man, that blue flame is insane. But these Hellions are sacrificial. They're not going to get much done. 
couple drones die, but that's about it. Gumio uses the opportunity to go ahead and dive into the middle of the map here, take out some of these creep tumors, and slow the inexorable push of creep when you're playing against somebody like Serral. Ten corruptors on the way from Serral. Are you kidding right now? Ten corruptors and five bases and a greater spire. And he's working on plus one ground carapace, too. The race car mech, how do they do against Broodlords? Pretty good, actually. I remember, who did we cast there? Somebody tried to go Broodlords against race car mech, and they just kind of got zoned out. Everywhere they went, the race car mech just went somewhere else. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. If I mean, if Cyril can make this work, I'd like to see how he pulls it off. That would be an exciting thing for me. Always good to see how strategies are dealt with when you're playing the StarCraft. Yeah, man, Cyril's getting plus three missile attack at ten minutes, which is insane. The timing there is just disgusting from him. Gumio's making additional Vikings. Double pumping those. Has he scanned the Greater Spire is the question. I mean, sure, there's an attack over here happening. And some Corrosive Bile is going to try to land. There are some tanks in the mix now. Gumio's mixing it up with some tanks. Once again, Cyril does not like what he sees. He's going to retreat with what he has. Fungal catching a couple Hellions there, but not the Fungal that Cyril was hoping for there. Not even remotely. Creep spreading it down the bottom side. Creep spreading it up the top side here. Where are where is the greater spire? And we'll check. Mm, no, that's interesting. He doesn't know about the greater spire, so his Viking count is only three. Yeah, I think he'd have more if he knew about the greater spire, as it turns out. So clearing some more creep tumors here. Once again, another fungal catching a few units. The fungal is pretty much an instant death here. There's not much getting out of that. Gumio cruising on in. Once again, not really willing to commit here, but he is willing to commit to a fifth base down here along the left side. And now quadruple pumping Thors. You know what's good against Broodlords right now, you guys? Thors. I played against a mecking Terran the other day. Made some Broodlords, felt pretty pleased with myself, and the Thors just stood in there and absolutely crushed them from distance with that bonus versus armored. It was amazing. All right, Gumio, your fifth base is in a lot of trouble. Can you save it? I don't think you can. The answer is that's a cancel. Or, you know, not a cancel, just lose it entirely. No big deal. I guess Gumio has the fifth base up here, and that was the sixth base. Huh, fair enough. Counting can be difficult, but yeah, just four Thors at a time is insane right now. Hellion's trying to get, do a bit of a run-by. We've got a... Was that a tank? Interesting. Just super tank drop here from Gumio. Wow. All right, man. He's going to land it here. Go after some of these drones. I'm liking this a lot, actually. Four drones going down, stopping all of the mining entirely on this third. Everybody coming up this ramp is just getting shelled into utter oblivion. Everybody's dead because Crossbile is really good. But it does take a few units with them there, and four drones do end up getting killed. So Cyril's up down to 76 workers now from 80. Attacking on him with a race car mech, killing as many of these tumors as possible. And in a straight-up fight against small numbers of roaches and ravagers, you can kind of do this. It's working out for Gumio so far, I would say. Where did our Thors go? Did he cancel those Thors? No, they're here. Here are the Thors. They're in the mix. They are ready to rock if necessary, and I think they will be necessary before this game is over. Is this more? Oh, these medevacs are just alive. <laughs> I was like, is that another drop? No, it's the same one from before. Broodlings. I like it when broodlings get sent out from their broodlords and then like, oh, just kidding, zoop, zip it on back home. It's pretty fun stuff. So medevacs, against all odds, are going to escape from this location and make it home. Maybe pick up some other stuff. All right, man, cyclone. So cyclone drop here. Trying to talk, take out a hatchery. My gosh, it kills bases so fast. They do end up getting it, and most everybody escapes. One cyclone dies, but... Okay, two cyclones die, but it's not as big of a deal as you would think it to be. So he gets the hatchery here. Broodling is absolutely wrecking these Hellions as they try to run around. Cyclones going after the... Oh my gosh, they're going to get they're gonna get the hive. They're going to get the hive, you guys. Yeah. Lock on. Wow. A cyclone drop gets the hive. Gumio takes it down. What a boss. These cyclones are all dead, but so what? 
Hive is gone. No mining from you here. He takes out this hatchery, forces it to be replanted. And Gumio has been pretty happily sitting on five bases for quite a while. Sure, he can't get a sixth base to come down, which is admittedly quite a problem. But, 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 Serral sitting on one, two, three, four, five, six bases. I guess, uh, including the two that are coming in right now. So that's technically four, which is not great. Serral is researching Neural Parasite 2, pretty darn good against Thors, if there are any number of those. I love the spines here. Sure, you're going to lose some drones, but a lot fewer than if you didn't have those spines. I can tell you that right now, guaranteed. I guarantee. What's that from? What's that particular I guarantee from? Honestly, don't know. Just doing this bit of a back and forth here. Cyclones fighting. How many tumors have died in this match so far? The answer is 51. 51 have died. Resources lost 12,000 for Serral, 13,000 for Gumio. Trying to do that burrow fungal move here, but the scan, and it kills infestors so fast. So, so fast with that lock on. It's amazing. Ravager 2, they don't even take the bonus damage, but it doesn't matter. It hurts them so immensely. Sarah's got his huge Broodlord army up here. That has so many Broodlords. That has 14 Broodlords, man. And the sensor towers make it hard for him to sneak up on anything that Gumio's trying to do here, but both players maxed out. Gumio being extremely, extremely patient. Not really just A moving in here, killing as many. There you go. Killing a bunch of spores. Oh, is he making battle cruiser? Yeah, man, that is weapon refit. That is definitely weapon refit there. Couple three spores do end up getting killed there, which is fantastic. And catching up some cyclones at the south here. Serral manages to win that battle quite nicely. So some changelings on the ground. That is not actually Gumio units. Always freaks me out here. Gumio taking another base at the bottom here. That's gonna be his sixth. Nope, seventh, man. He's on seven bases now. He's got so much stuff at home. So many factories. Still going for that weapon refit. Do we have any battle cruisers? No, man. Maybe later, though. Maybe later we'll get those. Spose. Gumio notices that Serral is trying to knock down these rocks. He gained access to his fifth up here, which would be problematic. If it were to come under attack, so he's moving up with his Thors to handle it. Kind of like it. Kind of like these big, big, beefy Thors. Their plus three attack is on the way. Their plus three armor is here. And that is enough to make Cyril just move away. Just moving away. No problem at all. Tank's going to come up and set up and try to kill as many tumors as he can. Is that a tank clearing or a creep clearing tank? Oh my gosh, the lock on. Oh, not enough. Army there to defend that hatchery in the bottom right. Well done, well played. Killing creep tumors with SCDs. Gumio is done having 77 workers. He doesn't need this many. Thank you very much. He needs army supply instead. So he's sacrificing SCDs here, which is going to mess up our workers' lost calculation at the end of the match for sure. But man, Gumio, he's basically taken half of the map here. He's got more bases than Serral does anyway. He's making three battle cruisers at a time right now. This is so amazing. This is so, so, so good. Anti armor missile plus corruptors plus brood lords is actually amazing. But parasitic bomb versus Vikings is pretty great, too. Oh my gosh. And these Vikings causing problems. Auto turrets trying to fight. They get an infestor, which is pretty good stuff. And fighting into auto turrets, never really what you want to do there. But Serral felt the need to do so anyway. Tech, 9,000, almost 10,000 here for Serral compared to 5,000 for Gumio. So way more upgrades, way more tech structures, way more static defense, which is all what this is included with. Thor dropping it. Gumio up north going to go wander right past Amon here. Hey, Amon, just bringing a Thor right past your face. Don't mind me. However, the Broodlords have found the seven. Or is that the sixth? I don't even know anymore. I think that's the sixth, and it's going to go down. Planetary Fortress with 20 kills. Pleased with himself that way, but in the end, not really going to be enough here. Hellbat's trying to clear out Spore Crawlers. Nope. They're completely dead. The Thor dropping. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. The Spore ends up dead very, very quickly indeed. What do you kill? Hydra Den? Interesting choice. Goes after the Hydra Den here and is probably going to get it. 
Wow, that was close. He ended up getting it, though, though. That was amazing, amazing stuff there for sure. More battlecruisers in production. The Vikings trying to snipe off the Broodlords, but no, the transfuses are so good. Anti-armor missile on everybody. We've all been Dorito-dusted. More SCVs here to just be sacrificed to the Swarm to free up additional supply. Gumio's down to 56 workers, allowing his army supply to get up to way bigger than it otherwise normally would be. More four drops happening. Liking this a lot. Broodlords, however, coming after another one of these bases and fighting pretty hard here. Ah, oh, the Abduct on the Thors, though, is such a good spell. Such a great spell. Getting them away from their friends and surrounding them with Broodlings is a massive, massively amazing play. Not taking a lot of damage, actually, are these Thors as... Is there even plus one? Nope, plus one melee is not even done yet. That's amazing stuff for sure. So that's going to help. The Broodlings are not as attackable, as, as dangerous as they otherwise could be. Planetary Fortress down. Thor's killing another Hydralisk Den that Cyril just replaced. He's making another one to replace it somewhere else. Uh, just right down here in the natural, which is where also his hive is, as it turns out. So Sacrificial Thor's... Maybe? Can we pick up and get out of here? By golly, you can. Two of them do manage to pick up and get the right the heck out. More Thor's coming in and clearing out creep. I love the Thor plays. Fungal on the Thor's, which is interesting, which means they can't be picked up. That's what you want to do, man. That was the great play out of Serral for sure. How many battle cruisers do we have? We have eight battle cruisers, you guys. Eight of them. Gumio is going into mass BC right now. The upgrades for them are pretty great at 3 3. They've got the weapon refit upgrade there, too. Thor's just actually wandered all the way over to this base by taking this bottom path. Doop, 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 doop. They're going to get a hatchery, you guys. No, no, no. Focus the hatchery. Focus the hatchery. They got it. And another hatchery goes down. Man, Gumio is giving Serral everything he can handle here today. Another parasitic bomb on the Vikings. He splits off very nicely. Gumio responds better that time to that situation. Making four BCs at a time. Gumio is trying to go mass BC versus this composition. And honestly, the number of Broodlords that are out that are exactly useless against Battlecruisers, it's a genius decision here from Gumio. Is he going to take this map? I feel like he very well could. Alright, Neural Parasite on the Thors. And they're going to die. Those are sacrificial Thors, man. All right, man, you need Corruptors to deal with Battlecruisers. You need Infestors to deal with Battlecruisers. How many Infestors are there on the ground? Six? I don't know if six is enough. A lot of SCVs going down. We're going down below the mark I think Gumio wants to be at. But guess what? The Battlecruisers are operational. Here they are just tearing through Serral's third base entirely. The Broodlords, I mean, are they just going to go for it? Are we base racing? We are base racing, ladies and gentlemen, at the 22-minute mark of this game. What more could you want from a ZVT? Then a Broodlord Battlecruiser base race. So much fun. So, so, so much fun here. All right, so, man, Battlecruisers going after really just being completely unopposed right now. Taking down the Spire would be great. They're a little bit distracted, though, unfortunately. Killing Overlords is pretty great, too. Vikings killing as many of them as they can. Trying to supply block Serral. Not working out too well to this point. There are just too many Overlords on in the sky. Dude, I'm serious. Killing these Spires would be amazing for you. Broodlord's taking down yet another base here. Thor's trying to save it. That's not going to happen in the least bit. All right, Neural Parasite on the Vikings. Fungal's here too. Wow, what is going on with the Vikings? We're trying to use Neural, or Neural Parasite. Parasitic Bomb here. There's a Neural Parasite for one. The Corruptor count is too high here. That's way too high. Plus the Neural Parasite on the one BC. More BCs jumping into assist though. And you know what? Not too shabby. They're fighting here. What are the Corruptors upgrades? They are at 3-3, so they're as upgraded as they can get. Yamato Cannon on as many of these Corruptors as they can make happen here. There's an engagement in the middle with a Hellbat. We're tactical jumping into battle now from Gumio. He's going to take down another hatch if he wants it. It's his, and he is going to get that for sure. The tech switch into Battle Cruiser. I don't think that Serral was prepared for this. He's lost his main, he's lost his natural, he's lost his third as well. I think Gumio is in the driver's seat of this match. I really think he's going to be the one to win this thing. Killing the Spires would be incredible. Are there additional Spires for Serral? The answer is no, these are them. Wait, nope, there is. There's one down here in the bottom right, which is actually really, really smart. But he has another Spire down there. Really, that's all he needs is a Spire until a Corruptor comes out at the wrong place in the wrong time. 
Raider, Spire, down. Corruptors, Corruptors, nothing but Corruptors being made by Serral right now. Battle Cruisers here. Killing Overlord. Serral not supply block, but he's down to 156 available total supply. Which is not where he wants to be. Serral has com completely obliterated from a first, second, third, and fourth bases. He's running off of a two-base economy right now. Whereas Gumio is pretty happily sitting on at least one or two. Ish, it feels like. I don't know, man. The income is definitely favoring Gumio, is all I'm trying to say. Now, do you want a tactical jump back here and deal with this is the question of the day. Man, free cyclones there for sure. The battle cruisers, are they on cooldown for tactical jumps? Some of them are. Most of them it looks like are not. Orbital command being taken down by corruptors as well, jumping right on down. Here we go. The Yamato cannon down the infestors. That's what you Oh, he's trying to get Yamato cannon down the corruptors. And just kill the infestors straight up. Which all the infestors are dying here. Holy crap! Rude Lords are in trouble, man. The army of Serral is in a heck of a lot of trouble right now. Where are the Ravens? That is your good game, Gumio! Takes the win in 25 minutes and 55 seconds! Holy crap! Gumio with the Battle Cruiser Tech Switch ends up winning the game. It is. Let's take a. Just, just, just take stock. Just take stock of the end here. Yeah, man, all the infestors are gone. The corruptor count is 15. Army supply 102 to 84 right now. This is how many battle cruisers? Uh, how many is on this page? 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah. It's 12. Upgrades are upgrades, but man. One to one, right? One corruptor versus one battle cruiser is not a good time for the corruptors. It never has been. It never will be. The brew lords are dead weight at this point. They don't count for anything in this battle. There are some spores, but against fully upgraded battle cruisers, it doesn't really matter. And again, Serral has this these two mining bases that he's mining from, and that's it. He is in a heck of a lot of trouble. He can't replace the army that he needs. His bank is almost nothing. He's got 80 minerals down there. A lot of gas, but that's about it. And fantastic. What That is getting an epic tag. That is an epic, epic ZVT. Wow. And again, I just think it comes down to the fact that Serral didn't know battle cruisers were coming. Which is a little bit surprising considering how well he scouts generally. But the battle cruisers showed up and he was like, oh, let me make some corruptors real quick. And he did. He did not have the corruptor ball until the battle cruisers showed up and started wiping out this space, going into the main, the natural, the fourth or the third, whatever that this one was. And then just continuing on there, a rampage of terror. Great stuff. I mean, we had parasitic bomb. We had neural parasites. We had fungals being tossed down. All of the spells being cast by Serral there, but it was not enough versus the might of these battle cruisers, who 16 kills on that one, which is nuts. Uh, nobody else looks like they're too much of a Terran hero there, just the 16 killer. But everybody else put in their work. 18 on that guy down there. So resources lost really even too. 44,600 for Gumio. And 44,100 for Serral in this game. Lost total counts. 40 drones and 63 SCVs. But again, I think the vast majority of those are sacrificial SCVs. 11 BCs died. How many Thors? 13 Thors end up getting killed there. Only two Brutalords died, but again, they were useless against the BCs at the end of the game. 72 Roaches, 25 Corruptors ended up getting down. Look at this. Look at this. Five Hatcheries and two Hives. That is so much damage to Serral's economy. If you can do this against Serral, you have a good chance of winning. Amazing. Amazing stuff for sure. Well, all right. Man, what a way to start the week. Happy Monday, everyone, because that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.